people keep on asking me, what is going on with Saab? You know Saab? Yeah, the old company that used to make cars that people love for their weirdness and quirky uniqueness. Apparently, architects love them. Well, yes, they did reemerge. They did come up with this incredible electric car with over 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers of range. But unfortunately, it appears as though it won't be likely to see the light of day. Here is why this car is being almost suppressed from being released. I mean, seriously, this thing looks unreal. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Right behind me, that's my primary means of transport. And uh, it's busted. I'm fixing it right now. Electric skateboards. The boys and I, that's what we ride here in Thailand. It's the best way to get around. And guess what? No tailpipe emissions. Costs almost nothing to charge. Literally cost me about two cents to do a 10 kilometer journey. Two cents. When it's working. Speaking of when it's working. Saab. They changed their name to NEVS after they went bankrupt. And this is the company that emerged from the ashes of Saab's bankruptcy. Intriguingly, they actually came about more than a decade ago. They've been working on this electric sedan, which looks absolutely mind-blowingly awesome for many years now. However, it's been put into hibernation. I'll explain what that means in just a second. The Emily GT is claimed to be capable of driving more than 1,000 kilometers or 621 miles in between charges. That's a massive range. That's thanks to a massive 175 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, that seems like overkill to me. I'm not sure that's really necessary, but they wanted it, so they made it. However, there are different options. Battery capacities of 140 kilowatt hours and a 105 kilowatt hour battery size were also planned for production, as was 11 kilowatt wireless charging via a pad connected to a fixed hub. So this would have been, an, or could still potentially be, an electric car you can charge very quickly at home using a wireless charging pad. I don't know if you think that's an idea or not, but if you're interested in wireless charging, I've made a couple of videos about it. I'll put some links in the description. In wheel motors, which is quite unusual for electric cars and different to that skateboard behind me. Now, most vehicles, most, most electric products use a belt drive. That uses a belt drive, but there is the option of hub motors. So this had hub motors and those motors made 121 horsepower each mounted to every wheel, giving the vehicle a total of 484 horsepower. Now, hub motors are a little bit controversial. No one really knows how they're going to go long term in an electric car because you think about it right the wheel takes a lot of the impact from the road but Saab were convinced that this is the best choice one of the reasons for that was it gives finer control of torque vectoring apparently such was the extent of the vectoring that the car could turn without using the steering wheel just using the motors themselves program director and former Saab engineer Peter Dahl told Swedish publication Karup the possibilities for torque vectoring are amazing all torque can be controlled. It's like changing from straight slalom skis to carving skis. In addition, the wheel motors ensure that all backlash is eliminated, resulting in an incredibly direct and solid feeling. I'm not sure what he means by backlash. Maybe if there's an engineer there, you can explain that to us all. Anyhow, he said on the downside, the unsprung weight on each wheel is higher. We have solved that with a good chassis with air suspension and active dampers. Now, one of the biggest reasons for, say, a bicycle being slow is when it has heavy wheels. That's why cyclists focus so much on the weight of the rotational mass of a wheel. By having hub motors, that rotational mass is significantly greater. A high-performance variant of the Emily was also in the pipeline. It was planned to have 653 horsepower and 1,600 and 23 pound feet of torque, which is more than 2,000 Newton meters. It would have made, it apparently was going to be capable of doing 0 to 62 miles an hour or 0 to 100 in 3.2 seconds. Now, the styling it looks amazing, but does it remind you? It does for me. It reminds me of the original Saab 93 and a little bit of the Saab 95 there as well. Now, apparently, it was designed by an unnamed Italian 
and refined by former Saab engineers. And they've done a phenomenal job, not just on the outside. I mean, the outside does look really nice, you have to admit, but the inside as well, it's very unique, different, very simple, simplistic, but not too simple. I think that this car needs to be made. The owner of the company is the Evergrande Group. Evergrande, you've probably heard of them. Yeah, the massive property conglomerate who have billions of dollars of debt in China and could even spark a global depression if the company was to go bankrupt. It's very possible they're so big, it could bring down everything with them. Well, they originally signed off on a run of 20 prototypes. However, Evergrande, which made its fortune as one of China's most prolific property developers, hit financial problems in 2020, and only six of these were actually built. Evergrande put Saab into hibernation last month, says Autocar. Having failed to secure a buyer of the Swedish firm's 340 employees, 320 lost their jobs. There's still a skeleton crew of 20 staff, the ones that know how to make this thing. I think someone should buy this company. Polestar signed a lease for part of Nev's or Saab's Trollhattan factory, which was formerly home to Saab, according to a statement from the Swedish city. The Volvo spin-off will use the facility as an R&D base for its future EVs, and is likely to hire some of the 320 staff who were laid off by Evergrande. New Nev's or Saab CEO Nina Salander is seeking a buyer for the Emily project and has encouraged interested parties to contact the company. It's for sale. It's also a joy to be able to show it, she told Corrupt. So anyone can come along and buy this car if they want to and mass produce it. Would that be a good idea? I actually don't know. I mean, realistically, we don't know the weight of the car. We don't know how much it costs to produce. We don't know what the battery cells are. We really need more information to know exactly what's going on here, whether or not this is a, a car that could be made in the future or that is likely to be acquired by another car company. Dahl said that the project is about a year and a half away from being production ready. He said, everything is in place to take it further into production. The prototypes are completely drivable, except that the airbag and auto braking systems are missing. The Emily prototypes use a 52 kilowatt hour battery pack from the Saab 93, an electric conversion of the Saab of the same name. So this company unfortunately has been put into official hibernation, but I'm hoping that someone will buy it. I think there's a high likelihood that someone will. I mean, think about it. MG, sure, they didn't go bankrupt, but they were kind of considered a bit of a laughing stock before they were purchased by a Chinese company, SAIC. It's very likely that another Chinese company, one not named Evergrande, will come along and buy this company because it has a good brand. People love the Saab brand, and I think it should continue. But that's just me. And hey, I'm a, bit, I'm a little bit sentimental about these old car brands. I'd love to see Saab back on the road. I don't really care who owns it, as long as someone makes the cars. And hopefully they can rehire back the 320 staff that were fired. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.